So the way that you would find the probability of mutually exclusive events is by adding the probability of the first event happening with the probability of the second event happening. If you remember, and versus or, and we multiply, or we add, so I'm gonna add the two probabilities together. So, for example, at the ballpark to your shop, there are 15 posters at the first baseman, 20 of the pitcher, 14 of the center fielder, and 12 of the shortstop. What's the probability that the fan choosing a poster at random will choose a poster of the center fielder or the shortstop? So if you're gonna go to the shop and choose one poster, you can only get a poster of a center fielder or a first baseman or a pitcher or a shortstop. You can't get a one poster of a first baseman and a shortstop at the same time. You can't get a poster of a center fielder and a poster of the shortstop at the same time. You're getting one or the other. So these are mutually exclusive events. You can abbreviate mutually exclusive as ME. That's fine. So we're just going to add the probability of getting a poster of a center fielder with the probability of getting a poster of the shortstop. So there are 14 posters of the center fielder in our shop out of a total of 61 total posters. So that's the probability that you would get a center fielder poster. 14 out of the total 61. And I'm going to add that to the probability of getting a poster of a shortstop. Well there's 12 posters of a shortstop out of a total of 61 posters. So I'm just going to add those two together. They have a common denominator, so I'm just going to have 26 out of 61, and that doesn't reduce. So the probability that you're going to get a poster of either the center fielder or the shortstop is 26 out of 61. These are mutually exclusive events because they can't happen at the same time. You can either get a poster of the center fielder or you can get a poster of a shortstop. Well, when you're trying to find the probability of events that are not mutually exclusive, what you have to do is you have to account for the overlap because the probability of event A and the probability of event B are gonna double count that overlap. So you're gonna have to subtract out the overlapping probability. So you have to subtract out like what's, what they share in common, the probability of what, they, what the common outcomes are. So when a die is rolled, what's the probability of getting a number greater than two or an even number? So let's think. We, what are the numbers that are greater than two on a die? Three, four, five, and six. And what are our even numbers? Two, four, and six. So if you're thinking of making a Venn diagram, where do these two things overlap? What commonalities do they share? Which numbers are simultaneously greater than two and even at the same time? Well, four is a number that's greater than two and six is a number that's greater than two. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the probability of getting a number greater than two. We wanna add that to the probability of getting an even number but then we're gonna subtract out the overlapping probability. What's the probability that we would get a four or a six? We have to subtract that. Because we, we double counted four and six. We included four and six in our list of, no of numbers greater than two. And then we included four and six again in our list of even numbers. So we have to subtract out the overlap because we double counted four and six. So the probability of getting a number greater than two, I have four numbers that are greater than two out of a total of six numbers that are on my die. Then I have three even numbers out of a total of six numbers. And then I'm gonna subtract out the overlap. I have four and six, two numbers that are four or six out of six total numbers. So the probability of getting a four or a six is two out of six. So these all have a common denominator. Four plus three is seven, minus two is five out of six. So what's the probability that I randomly roll a die? So what's the probability that I roll a die and I land on a number that is either greater, that's greater than two or an even number? It's five out of six.